but this is a very important um, special edition conversation that I'm going to be having this morning with Kirk Smalley. He is the co-founder of an organization called Stand for the Silent, and I'm going to link him in with us now. So while we're waiting for Kirk, this is going to be a little different format than the interviews I normally do because this topic is very important. It is National Suicide Prevention Month and a very, very important organization. Hello there. Hi, Leslie. How are you this morning? I'm doing, I'm, I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'm ready to go. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. So I appreciate you joining me this morning. Um, <clears throat> I know the topic we're going to discuss is near to you and very important. So I think I'd like to start off by you telling everybody about Stand for the Silent and how it came to be, if that's okay with you. Sure. Stand for the Silent was started back in 2010 um, by a group of high school kids in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. They heard about what happened to our son, our 11-year-old boy, Ty. Um, Ty was bullied for over two years at school, and one day he kind of finally had enough, um, and he fought back. And, you know, the teacher saw Ty turn around and push the kid back after, after the bully pushed him and didn't see the bully. Uh, Ty got suspended, and uh, his mama went and picked him up and took him home. And she had to go back to work. She worked at the school that he went to. And uh, when she got home that afternoon, she she, she found that he had um, taken his own life in our bedroom floor. And uh, these high school kids in Oklahoma City, they heard about what happened to him. And they decided that they couldn't live in a world like that anymore. You know, we're losing far too many children to, to suicide because of being bullied in our world right now. And so they started a, a Facebook group called Stand for the Silent. Um, we actually heard about what they had done in honor of our son. And, and I reached out to their director and uh, told her I, I needed to meet these kids, you know. And so she invited me to come and speak to her 63 students. And during the course of that conversation, me and the kids decided that, uh, you know, we, we couldn't just change their hallways, their school. We had a whole world to change. And so we started traveling around doing presentations at schools, me and, and a bunch of the kids. And, um, it, it kind of snowballed. It, it grew and grew from there. And the kids eventually decided that they wanted to donate everything that they had done, you know, all of the logos, the pledge that they had written, literally everything, uh, even, even their social media platform uh, groups to Laura and I. And we incorporated Stand for the Silent and applied and received our 501c3 and, and started traveling around not only the country but the world, speaking to anybody that would invite us to, to come and speak to their kids and um, try and make this kind of thing stop. You know, we've currently got uh, 332 chapters of Stand for the Silent around the United States in 39 states. We have chapters of SFTS in 18 countries. Um, we've been doing this for a little over 10 years. I have only been keeping track of numbers of, st of students and schools that we visited for about four and a half years. And, and in the last four and a half years, we've been to uh, 1,594 schools and we've talked to a little over a million, 600,000 kids. Um, you know, we, we're just pretty passionate and adamant that, that we have to make this stop. And Leslie, the numbers and statistics in America alone are just astounding. They're, they're, yeah. they're breathtaking, you know. Oh. One out of four of our children in, the, in our country right now will actually have a plan on how they would take their own life before they graduate from high school. Um, Did you say one out of every four? One out of every four. Uh, 
you know, I, I actually have a list of over 66,000 children that have taken their own life in the past seven and a half years in the United States alone. And if you do the math, that comes up to almost 22 a day. That's almost one every hour. You know, That's with, terrible. It is. You know, it, one is way too many, especially if it's someone that you know, someone that you love. And it doesn't have to be this way. You know, we don't have to have this happening. Suicide has always been kind of a taboo subject. You know, it's hard for people to, to not only talk about, it's hard to think about, especially when you're talking about children that are taking their own lives. On that list of 66,000 kids that I know of, the youngest one on it was a, a six-year-old boy. Now, when you're we have, kidding. No, ma'am. When we have children as young as six taking their own lives because of the actions of others, it's time we learn to talk about this. You know, I get messages literally by the hundreds and thousands from these kids that I go and speak to. And they say, you saved my life. I actually am that one in four. I had a plan. I was going to take my own life tonight when mom and daddy went to sleep. And now I'm not. And I want to help you, Kirk. I want to help you make this stop. It is possible to stop this. But we have to learn we can talk about it. We don't have to act it out. We can talk about it. What do you, what would you say to those watching and how they can get involved and steps they can take and maybe even how they can get involved with Stand for the Silent? Well, actually, they can, they can actually start a chapter of Stand for the Silent in their school or even in their community. You know, we have various kinds of chapters. We have obviously the school chapters, which are school based. Um, and what a chapter is and does, it's, it, it's just a group of committed individuals. So they don't have to all be children. You know, we prefer the adults, adults to get involved as well. Um, school chapters, they try to keep spreading our message and raise awareness to bullying and, and what it can, can and does cause. Um, you know, the, uh, the, they may do floats in their homecoming parade or something like that that say stop bullying. They hold monthly meetings and and decide how and and when and and what they're going to do as far as you know keeping our message alive in their hallways people can can get me invited to come speak at their local schools or their local communities you know i'd love to come and talk i'll go anywhere i'm invited anywhere uh you know we've done presentations at churches we've done them at at schools we've done them in communities i've i've been invited to speak at church camps or summer camps i've been invited to i've actually spoken in prisons you know we have a chapter in the only maximum security women's women's prison in the state of missouri i was invited to speak there for what they call their victims impact week and and the women there were so moved and touched the the prisoners were so moved and touched by by what we talked about that they decided they had to get involved and they wanted to start a chapter in the prison, you know. Um, That's incredible. You can start a community chapter. Um, basically, what that is is pretty much the same as a school chapter, except, you know, um, a lot of times it's adults, parents, grandparents that are involved with that, and they get their kids involved as well, um, you know, helping raise awareness in their community to what bullying can and does cause, you know, and, and how they can uh, help. You know, we send them tons of resources on how they can, um, you know, speak to people about about preventing suicide and, and raise awareness and, and the signs that to look for, you know. And some of them are very, very subtle, you know. And that's uh, what I was just going to ask you about the signs. What do you think that most of these kids, if any, go to their parents first? Do they go to people at school? Do they say anything at all? A lot of times, you know, I've met over a thousand families and parents that have lost children to suicide because of being bullied. And sadly, Leslie, you know, I think every single one of them is, is pretty similar to what happened with us and Ty in the fact that, you know, Laura did work at Ty's school and she was in the office almost every single day telling the principal, you know, hey, this kid is 
bullying Ty and, and you got to make it stop. And the standard answer she kept getting was, oh, you know, boys will be boys. Kids will be kids, you know, toughen up cupcake type thing. Um, and eventually Ty quit telling us that he was being bullied. You know, he'd come home with a new bruise or a scratch or something. And we'd say, what happened? And, oh, I fell down, you know, uh, got it playing on the playground at recess, whatever, you know. Um, and a lot of times when when parents go to the school looking for help to, because their kids are being bullied, they, they, uh, you got a lot of mama bears out there you know, and they want to protect their child. And so they go in kind of with the wrong attitude. They go in mad and they walk in with both guns blazing and they say, you got to stop this. You got to make it quit. You know, if you don't do that, I'm going to show you how that feels. You're never going to get anywhere that way. When you walk in on the offensive, immediately those school administrators are going to throw up a shield, throw up a wall and they become defensive. Instead, we got to go in with the attitude of how can we work together to end this, to make this stop. And that was a really, really tough lesson to learn. You know, I can only imagine. And I think there's something to be said for what you said. And I think it applies to a lot of situations in general. But when you, I would imagine when they approach the school, it's you're not doing enough. What's happening to my kid? But I would imagine there's something happening to the kid that's bullying their kid as well and so they have to get the whole story out right and if you yeah. don't have the openness to do that then where do we go from there and see bullying is a learned behavior you know and it can be unlearned most bullying is learned by the people that we we spend the time with most you know a lot of it comes from our parents um you know i've seen particularly in the Native American uh, tribes, I see a lot of generational bullying. I've been to several dozen Indian reservations around the country that invite me to speak at, at, to their entire reservation community. And, um, you know, they have a lot of generational bullying. Grandma and Grandpa bullied this family. And so Mom and Daddy learned to bully those children. And so now I've learned that I got to treat those others that way. And if we can break that cycle, break that chain for just one, one kid, you think of all of the people that we can affect down the course of time, you know, because bullies don't tend to bully just one, one person. That's their makeup. That's their personality. So they, they bully others, you know, just as a course of action. That's how they are. And, if we and do they tend to rope other kids into their conversation too? So I would imagine that if you take one kid that just says, no, I'm not going to do this, this is wrong. Sure. And, and that's what we try to do is we try to get the bystanders involved. You know, there's more bystanders than there are bullies and there's more bystanders than there are victims. I mean, far too often you see social media post kids uh, posting videos of a fight, you know, and you got, 50 or, or 60 kids standing around videotaping somebody picking on, on somebody weaker or smaller or younger. And they want to post that on social media to, to be Facebook famous, you know, for 10 minutes, see how many hits they can get on it, you know, how many shares. But if we can get one person out of that crowd to stand up and say, hey, stop, leave him alone. It's a proven fact that 96% of the time, if one person will say something, bullying stops within 10 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean the kid isn't going to be bullied tomorrow by the same child. But right now, that instant, bullying will stop within 10 seconds. One person speaking up. Wow. So you try to get the bystanders involved. You know, you try to get them to realize, you know, our main message to the kids that we talk to is I am somebody. We firmly believe that. We sell little wristbands on our website that say I am somebody. We've even got them that glow in the dark. 
And, you know, I get messages from kids. We give them to all the kids that we go and talk to. And I get messages from them. Oh, mine broke. I've had it for seven years and it finally broke. Can I get another one? And so we'll send them one. They, you know, that, that's how much that means to them. They, they see that and it's a constant reminder that they have a right to be here. That they have a right to be who they are. And that we love the somebody that they are just exactly the way they are. Yeah. yeah. What have you seen now since COVID with the schools in a lot of areas being closed and now starting to open back up? Um, were you still hearing stories, getting messages? What's been your feeling from an organizational perspective? Yeah, we've, we've been doing an, a, a lot of uh, Zoom conference meetings uh, instead of in-person uh, presentations because of the COVID um, virus. Uh, in the last four months, cyberbullying has actually increased 75%. And, uh, you know, it's because of the virus, and it's, it's directly correlated to that, I'm sure of it. You know, kids are spending more time online because they're at home, they're doing distance learning, they're, they're um, uh, spending more time on social media platforms. You know, Leslie, I have been to schools where first graders have smartphones, and they're good with them. You know, they know how. Probably to better than me. A lot better than than most adults do. The you know, for instance, you can take a picture of somebody walking down the hallway with your camera on your phone now, or in the locker room, and you can get on a photoshop and you can make it look like that person is doing anything you want to do and then you can build a fake facebook account and you can post that picture online with the click of a button you can run someone's life now you might get to feeling bad about that tomorrow leslie you've just posted on a fake facebook account a picture of me doing something and you might get a little regretful tomorrow and think man maybe I shouldn't have done that I'll delete that I'll delete that post and so you go on and you delete that picture of me doing whatever you you made me do with Photoshop and it's gone and then everything's okay right no how many people saw it before you took it down somebody saw it somebody shared it somebody saved it it's never truly gone now. It's out there forever. And it so followed. what would you what would you tell maybe parents to look for? Because um, that's a little different of a conversation than them looking for physical signs and symptoms on their kids when they come home from an actual school building or a school event. What would you say to that? Well, we actually have several resources that uh, companies that we work with um, to actually, you know, one, one of the hard parts is most parents, I'm 55 years old. I grew up without Internet. I went to school. We didn't have social media. We don't fully understand the ramifications of what happens on social media. Most parents answer to a, a kid being picked on online, bullied online, cyber bullied is eh, we'll fix that little johnny you're being bullied on facebook we'll just delete your facebook page and that takes care of the problem right no just it, means that johnny can't see it anymore right now little johnny walks into school monday morning after the weekend and everybody's pointing and laughing at him and he doesn't even know why you know from what's been posted online so that's not an answer it's actually worse if you do that the answer would be more to monitor your kids social media platforms you know if your kid has facebook you better be on their friends list do you ever suggest that parents reach out to the other parents um i asked just because i'm i'm like i was i'm 42 years old we didn't have internet we didn't have cell phones when we rode our bikes to someone else's house, we had to call when we got there so our parents knew we didn't get hit by a car. And if there was an issue with another person in our group, the parent called the other parent. 
sometimes that works. Uh, again, it goes back to bullying as being, as being a learned behavior. Most bullies are raised by bullies. That's where they learn it. And so when you call and talk to the dad of a child that's bullying your child, you're, you're probably going to be talking to a bully. And that doesn't have to be bullying outside of their home, right? It could be the parent is bullying the child in a way, right? Sure. You know, and here, here's the thing. Most, most bullies do what they do because of certain inadequacies that they feel they have. You know, I'm more athletic than you. I'm faster. I'm stronger. I'm bigger but yet there's something inside them missing and they have an emptiness there that they really want to fill. And the only way they can possibly think to do that is by making you feel inadequate and that makes them feel even stronger. Yep. Well, we have talked about so many things and this topic is so important. And again, we mentioned um, at the beginning that it is national suicide prevention month and stopping bullying is a way to prevent those suicides from happening. In closing out our conversation, Kirk, is there any, anything you can tell everyone, or even after this, you can post it in the comments, um, but how can people get in touch with you or the organization? Sure. Uh, we have a contact email uh, on our website. Our website is www.standforthesilent.org and our contact email is contact at standforthesilent.org or my personal email is kirk, K-I-R-K, at standforthesilent.org. Um, you know, I answer every email that we get on both of those those accounts. You can join us on our social media platforms, you know, here on Instagram. Uh when you make a comment or or post uh, a private message to standforthesilent.org, you're talking to me. You know, I will be the one answering you. And if you have a child that's being bullied and you're at your wit's end and you don't know what to do, I'll help any way I can. You know, there is the main thing that I can tell parents that have had this problem and that they're, they've gone to the school and they've, they, they've got no response or, or very little response and it's still happening to your baby is never stop fighting for your kid. There is always someone higher up the ladder that we can go to. If you talk to the, the counselor and they haven't helped you and if you, then you've talked to the principal and they haven't helped you and then you go up to the superintendent and then the school board and then the state board of education and then you can even go to the federal level and talk to the federal department of education. And I've even gotten the U S department of justice involved in a certain few instances. We have a lady that works there that is amazing at the U S department of justice. And she is actually taken because we don't have any current new laws that cover cyberbullying. She has actually taken older laws dealing with human rights, I mean, archaic laws and interpreted them in, in a certain way and forced schools to help stop what's happening to kids. And she's been very successful with it. There is always somebody higher up the ladder that we can go to. You know, There's always someone that will help, right? There's always someone that will help. And, you know, you mentioned all that for the parents. I would assume the same is for the kids. And I can vouch for what Kirk said. When you reach out to them, I... Years ago is when I found out about your organization, and I've been following it ever since. I um, reached out immediately and got an immediate email back. And now that social media has gotten stronger, when I messaged um, here on Instagram, I got an immediate response back. So definitely reach out to them. Definitely reach out to Kirk. I care. He cares. Whatever we can do to spread the message, to stop bullying, and to stop losing, as Kirk puts it, stop losing these babies. Kirk, thank you so much.
thank you, Leslie, for having me on and helping spread our message. Sugar, it means the world to me. If we can save one baby from doing what our son did, then it's worth everything we have to do, Sugar. I I agree. I absolutely agree. And I, anytime you want to come on, please let me know. I'm, I'm happy to do these. I, it, it's something that needs to be talked about, like you said, constantly. Yes, ma'am. Well, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And thank you again. And thank you to everyone who tuned in. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.